bootlickers. With the Bollywood bootlickers. Lick them. Bollywood bootlickers. Lick them little boots. Bollywood bootlickers. Lick them real good. Bollywood bootlickers. Lick them real nice. Bollywood bootlickers. If the deal shot comes. Lick the boot. Lick the boot. What? What? I just played it off the old uh, uh, podcast that we did a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the mm. annual podcast. The annual podcast. You asked for it. You got it. Once the annual a year. podcast. Once a year, we rejoin uh, and uh, talk about all the different things you guys like to talk about. These are basically, this is like a long form intro. It's essentially yeah, what, that's what it is. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the things that matter to you most. Like, is Taylor going to marry Travis? <laughs> Travis just got a hundred million dollar deal. Big, big. He and his brother just got a big, big speaking, old deal. Speaking of podcasts, uh, dang, we uh, we got the same uh, deal, but they kind of we turned it down. Turned for it down. A better offer. I we think get we'll way more money from Karen Johar for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome back to the stupid Bollywood Bootlickers podcast. Don't let the name confuse you, though. Yep. Not just Bollywood news. We'll look any about. any boot. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and so, uh, you guys can, uh, let us know below, like, different kind of topics that you'd like us to talk about here, but we're just kind Someday of... Someday we'll have a phone-in. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be really cool, too. I uh, would love that. Just do live phone-in Well, yeah, one thing I discussion. really want to do is, like, find maybe just local, um, Indian celebrities that maybe have left India and come here to pursue... That would be great. Like, they're almost basically There's a few. nobodies. But <laughs> no, there's a good, there's a couple. Who was it that Andrani told me is living here? Is it Preeti who's living here now? Yeah, yeah, Preeti's living here. Oh yeah, she's easy to get. Easy. Uh, Come on over, Preeti. <laughs> That's not who I was talking about. I was oh. talking about more like the uh, I know the guy, the guy who was the first AD on no, the, to whom three the actor from Three Idiots that was uh, oh also, yeah also in the office. Yeah. <gasps> Speaking of the office, name. so. We're sitting outside. I'm going to post about this sort of because outside of the the grocery store where we shop, there was this guy playing really beautiful music, and he had this sign up, and he he said he was uh, he didn't have his work permit yet. I talked to him for a little bit. He's from Italy. He's mm -hmm. only been here five months, playing great music. By the time this is up, you'll see it. It's on my Instagram. I'm posting it today. Playing beautiful music, and people were going coming up and giving him some money. My heart goes out to him just as a human, but also Indrani and I know the what it takes to go through the immigration process here. And while we're sitting in, we were sitting in the car with the windows rolled down, just listening to him play his music and walking right past our car, right in front of us goes Steve Carell. <laughs> and he walks, he walks in and Johnny says, that was Steve Carell. And about five minutes later, he comes walking right past us again. And he's got a gallon of ice cream in his left hand. And he's just walking back to the car with his, he just came to the store to get a gallon of ice cream. <laughs> They're regular people just like us. Yeah. Well, that's that's normative here. I've oh, yeah. at, not at that grocery store, but the one I used to live in in Encino. Um, Joey used to come in all the time. Matt LeBlanc. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He used to come into the store all the time. Rip. Yep. Matt LeBlanc. Hmm? Matt LeBlanc, not Matthew Perry. I've seen him before. You said rip. I know. It was a joke. <laughs> uh, I did see Matt LeBlanc like a month before he died, though. You mean Matthew Perry? Yes. That one. <laughs> <laughs> I did just oh, got... I you, mean, you mean the, the, like a month before he was murdered? Yeah. Yeah. A, 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 I just got a haircut over in Sherman Oaks. He uh, did or you did? I did. Uh, which and, hair? That one? <laughs> and I was talking to Steph on the phone. And eating a sandwich at the same time? I, I was coming home. And... I looked out my window, and I saw someone walking on the street, and I was like, why does that person look familiar? And then he got closer, and then he turned, and he was like... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm almost positive. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. uh, what's his name? What's his name? Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry just passed me on the street. <laughs> I told you about Conan O'Brien, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that the uh, uh, most famous person you'd ever... Just had a chance encounter Just with a chance encounter, not an yeah. Because I've I've encounter. I've had working encounters with a not working buttload, no. but chance encounters and most fun encounters. Yeah, in the baseball world, got to meet by chance. And Babe gets, Ruth? No, Mike Piazza. Oh. Uh, he, I don't know if you remember Mike Piazza. I do. Um, who else am I trying to figure out? That I had chance. Conan's was the most was yeah. like the most fun. Yeah. Um, 
it happens so often here that I've forgotten yeah. a bunch. And just you'll be sitting at a restaurant, you'll pull, go, go, hey, that's yeah, yeah. Rich does it just the other morning. Rich said, oh, "This guy's I'm racking my brain. I've seen this guy in so many shows, and we'll t so it happens a lot." No, yeah, like, it happened yeah. with Joseph Gordon Levitt with me at a um, a movie screening, like it was like a street food cinema, not like a premiere. Mm. Um, Maya Rudolph came into oh, a place I used to work. I had, me too. I had a great encounter with Maya. I was working at FedEx office. Sweet Lady Jane. Yeah, you were in the same so spot because that's where she right goes. Yeah. And Sweet Lady Jane was right next door. Yeah. She came in. It was late. No one else was in the place. And she asked for my help with the photo machine. So I came over to help her with the photo machine. And then the moment we were done, I just wanted her to know how I genuinely felt. And I said, by the way, I think you're the best thing to happen to SNL since... Um, Oh, why is her name escaping me now? She's married to Gene Wilder. She used to play Roseanne, Rosanna, Dan. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it's killing me, Rick. It's with a G, Gloria. Damn it. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. Gene Wilder, wife, SNL. Yeah, why don't you have her name? Gilda Radner. I knew it was a G. <laughs> Gilda Radner. <laughs> oh, was, wow. And she was very nice. You know Gilda Radner? Tell me you know Gilda Radner. I know who Gilda Radner is. Okay. Uh, at the same place, I also ran into uh, What's Her Face from American Pie and How I Met Your Mother, uh, the redhead. Um, this one time at band camp, that one. Um, <laughs> you knew How I Met Your Mother, oh. you'd be excited. Sorry. Um, you ever go through that show? No, have not yet. It's a great show. Yeah. Uh, it's a great show. Um, but anyways, yeah. So you can let us know what kind of topics you'd like us to discuss. Um, like, I actually asked. They could message you, right? They, they, yes. could, they could send you messages, and then we could pull up those and messages. And on the and, comments and below, do the, yeah. uh, just upload. And answer like questions. Um, you'd like to see, like, uh, one specific. I don't know if we're going to talk about it long, because it's a heavy subject. But the thing going on in the Mali Elm industry, obviously, it's awful. Yeah. Uh, it's basically like the Me Too of yep. Mali Elm industry. Yep. Um, that, we know about that. It, it's awful, obviously. And the thing I will say is that it's not the Mali Elm industry alone. Correct. If you put every industry under a microscope, including Hollywood, which is one of the reasons the Me, Me Too, Too movement happened. was happening. Correct. Now giving people the a voice to speak out uh, against the powerful. Anytime there's a powerful person, there's unfortunately going to be this shit. It's awful. Yeah. It's an awful, awful situation. And it uh, is. I need to plug the camera in. Yeah. And change, whenever that stuff is called out as it should be, change needs to happen. And it, it can, it, it needs to happen with the people who have the power and the balls to stand against the power. Um, and, yeah, so us saying it's it's every industry is not to minimize the fact that yeah. right now the the spotlight is on the Malayalam industry, but and it isn't just the film industry. No, it's every industry. Like Corbin said, hello. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. It's, it's just it, it's it, it's every industry around the world. Where and powerful. wherever it happens, it needs to be called out. And men. Yep. Um, and those people who do that need to be prosecuted. So there's probably uh, people that are way more informed on exactly the goings on in the Mali industry that would be much better to listen to than us. Of but course. The main thing is that it like people are like, oh talk about the Mali oh, if you put any industry, <laughs> the Hindi, the Telugu, the Tamil, unfortunately, they will all have it. And but here's here's something <laughs> to some else. degree, unfortunately. You always have to take this into consideration because this has happened in the Me Too movement. Where there's and, powerful men, awful things are going on. Well and the other thing that happens is in those moments there are opportunists who will make false allegations yeah. against people who are innocent. Yep. And then there's innocent people who are hurt because of other people piggybacking on a legitimate cause. Yeah. Because they're greedy. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's the a, best the best thing to do in those moments as is, is, is outsiders is is to just take it with a grain of salt and do as much research as you can to find out the truth. But the people who are in the industry and have influence and power need to speak out. Um, agreed. Um, you watch anything this week? Yes. What'd you watch? Um, do you ever see Romancing the Stone? You rewatched it after we saw, uh, the, yeah. the, the, the Lugo film? Yeah, remember it made me think of it? So I went to rewatch it. I hadn't watched it since I was a kid. When it came out, I was 15. 
I saw it a few times because it was on Showtime, so you got to watch it over and over again. And as a kid, loved it. Watched it with Indrani. At one point, she turned to me and she said, this thing's more Bollywood than Bollywood. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. is it? It's a hoot. And it's funny because when you go back, it was nominated for two Golden Globes. And I used to think, wow, it was such a good movie. It's still campy and fun, but it's not a good movie. Yeah, It's got a lot of great action sequences, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. I watched the... What did you watch? Uh, the Alien series. I've been watching it for about two weeks. I finished it. Finally. Okay, so you've seen all the alien films, oh, I, except I, obviously Romulus. Which I had is seen out right Alien now. and Aliens, which are the best. Um, the original, two. the original is the best. And then I started uh, like uh, two weeks ago. I was like, okay, I, I went in chronological, and I'd, I'd I'd done this with the entire Predator series, so I'd also seen the Alien versus Predators as well. Yeah. Um. So I was like, I'm gonna finish the Alien series before Romulus comes out on OTT when I get to watch it. So I watched Prometheus, Alien Covenant, I think is what it's called. And then Alien 3, and then Alien Resurrection. And the last ones were kind of hard to sit through, weren't they? Alien 3 was awful. Yeah. It was by far. And Steph even said this right when it was done. She was like, that was dreadful. Was terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so if you, I don't know if you've ever seen, uh, if you're ever going to go through them, I guess if you want to make sure you've seen them all, you can. And um, when are you going to go through the Mission Impossible films? You hate Tom Cruise. I do. Yeah. But yeah, that was... Uh... And you're going to wait for Romulus, Here, obviously, because we can do this. you've got kids. Let's rank our top five Tom Cruise films. Okay. Ever. Okay. Wow. Top yep. five ever? Not Good performances. Grief. The films. But the, his performances are part of the films. No, I'm saying we're not ranking his okay, performances. That's true because we're ranking are, the film. There are some films that you could have. He had a good performance. It was a bad film or a bad well, film like, and a good performance. My favorite performance of Tom Cruise is in Tropic Thunder. I'm not going to include it in this because it's not a Tom Cruise film. And when he's got such a small role. <laughs> yeah, that's, but I love that role for him. Yeah. Um, but do you have it off the top of your head? Oh, like my you, stars. Your, your, your favorite? Having to choose is your, difficult. Tom I need a. I have. I've not seen anywhere near the amount that you have. So, um, yeah, like I, I have five immediately that come to mind. But then I have to stop and think: Are those really the ones that I would say are my favorites? Um, and I have favorites that are enjoyable and guilty pleasures, but I would never put them in an elevative category. I'm just saying, like top five favorite Tom Cruise films. Okay. I'm not going to put him in the order of what I think is number one, two, three, four, and five. Can I just pick five? Because it's is it oblivion? Yeah, it's oblivion. Um, okay, so oh, his character in Rock of Ages was very in my too. five. <laughs> are you, you got his his uh, yeah yeah okay. Oh, um, you love Night and Day. I love Night and Day. So Night and Day is in there. In Jerry Maguire five? is in there. Yes, I love Night and Day. Jerry Maguire. Rain Man. Oh, yeah. Rain Man. MI3. Um, see, I've already got four. Minority Report. Mine, I really, really like Minority Report. A, a lot of folks aren't crazy about time. it. I really like Minority Report. Okay. Um, and uh, it's hard not to a like few A Few Good, good Men. Good men yeah, that's man. a great one, too. Huh? Young Guns was a lot of fun. Cocktail was a lot of fun. The Color of Money was a lot of fun. There's Top Gun. Legend oh, is one yeah. of my favorites, not because of Tom Cruise. Legend is because of Tim Curry. Oh, I've never seen Risky Business or and The Outsiders or The Outsiders. Oh, The Outside Taps. Oh my goodness, Taps is <laughs> he has a really really small part in Taps, but Taps is a great movie with George C. Scott. There's a lot of name actors in Taps. There's um. This is a difficult list for me, one, because I haven't seen most of them. And then also when I just think about them, I'm like, well, I didn't care. Uh, <laughs> the, I remember when The Outsiders came out, I was 14. That was the thing in junior high. I mean, all the junior high school girls had all of The Outsiders in some way, shape, or form on their books, on their backpacks, on their lockers. Everybody's in that, too, The Outsiders. Everybody's in I it. Almost it was it. the thing. I almost watched it, I want to say, a month ago. I didn't, I didn't yeah, start the, it. Yeah, The Outsiders was the thing for teenagers, man. So mine would probably be Rain Man. Uh, you could probably throw Top Gun in there, I guess. It's, it's been a lot. I want to see Born on the Fourth of July again. Uh, not seen it. 
Uh, I saw it when it came out once, and I that's not enough. Uh, did, you, did you include Jerry Maguire? I haven't seen that since I was 10. Oh, you need to revisit it. My mom yeah. had it, and I watched it because there was boobies in it. Yeah, you bet. Um, Movies are always I, better that way. I don't remember very much. Outside you should rewatch it. I remember the book. Yeah, you should rewatch it. <laughs> it's a very good movie. Renee Zellweger's wonderful. Uh, okay, a Mission Impossible. You saw MI three? No, wait. Yes, is yeah. that the one with Philip? Yes. Yeah, okay. of course. You can yeah. include that one. That's yeah. fine. Uh, Minority Report was fine. I like Minority Report. Uh, Last Samurai would be in there. I like. Oh my Last goodness! Samurai How could I forget Last Samurai? Last Samurai? That's a good one. That's absolutely in my five. And uh, I'm just going to include Tropic Thunder. See, it's so it's so hard I, for me to pick five. I actually is really difficult. Even though the film is, and I really love Maverick. Even though the film is pretty bad, uh, his character in Rock of Ages was very funny to me. Jack Reacher was good. wasn't great, but it was good. I enjoyed Jack I've Reacher. Never, I didn't see his Mummy. I haven't actually seen the original Mummy so either. So. I Mission Impossible Fallout was very good. I obviously, Top Gun Maverick was a lot of fun. Top Gun 3, good lord. So I've got, I got 10 cruise films that I love. Yeah. Love. Yeah. I can't believe it. I, that's why it's so hard to pick when you brought up Last Samurai. I love Last Samurai. Uh, yeah, Last Samurai. See, see, a, see, he's got good stuff, man. I literally struggled to name five. <sighs> Granted, I haven't that's seen it. That's because you just haven't seen enough. He's literally Tom Cruise and everything. It, it annoys me. I don't get him that. Him as a person annoys and see, me. That's what I don't get. Him as a person annoys me. How many, like, you have this thing about not liking actors who are themselves. Yeah. I don't understand that. Because I don't consider that, that talented. Oh. It's much more difficult. I disagree with. To be yourself. I disagree with. Than it is to just put on a character. I disagree with. I've seen a lot more butchered characters than I have people just being themselves. No, I've seen people being themselves and it's, it, it doesn't work. But there's there's some of the greatest actors of all time are who they are because they're so good at just being themselves. We've had this discussion I mean, you know, how, how many times has Irfan been Irfan in a film? That's true, but we have <laughs> seen versatility and those are usually my favorite ones of his. Oh. Uh, when he's not... When he's playing something different. Because you don't like Jack Nicholson. Uh, that's incorrect. Well, he's always Jack, so I don't know why you'd like him. No, he just has a... He, he, the thing that's always Jack is his voice. <laughs> he's, Everything is always Jack. He, he's very bad at hiding his voice, that's for the, sure. The, the, he's always Jack. I mean, if you want to say he's not one of my favorite actors of all time, yes. That's, that's true. But I like Jack Nicholson. It's just insane. He's a very good actor. Most of the time, De Niro is De Niro. I disagree with that. When uh, is he? When is he not De Niro? I, I, I mean, I just watched Taxi Driver. Uh, he was. Oh, he's so De Niro in that. No, um, I disagree with. Also, I'm not saying people that are themselves are bad. I just my favorites will always be the people that have more range Ugh. because I consider speaking of uh, an acting conversation we can have I've been sending Rick these awful TikToks that come oh, up on my feed I'm not man. gonna I'm not gonna put it on screen because I don't want to give him no 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 anything but it's really funny he sends me at least one a day because they, they're they painful they show up on my TikTok uh, for some reason well because I hate watching them I hate watch them <laughs> uh, but it's this guy I believe he's in New York and he shares these like 16 second clips of his acting class. And he's the teacher. And it's like the this one actor does a terrible scene, read, right? And then his note to this actor is, take your hands out of your pockets. Maybe, maybe yell a little bit. With no, no justification in any way, shape no. or form from the script or otherwise as to why the character ought to not have their hands in their pocket. And then he shows the scene after where they do that and we're supposed to be like, no, oh, wow, that was great. It literally pisses, ruins my day anytime I see it. <laughs> he does. He said, Honest, and he said, here, I'm going to ruin yeah, your day yeah. too. Honestly, that's, that's one of the reasons I actually don't, I've never liked acting class very much. Unfortunately... Uh, More of them than not are pretty dreadful. Uh, obviously, I think there's a place for them. And maybe there's, there's a specific a place for us. kind of people for them. Yeah. Because maybe people that aren't as, I guess, 
talented yeah. or um, they're just kind of getting into it and they want to learn things. Yeah. Sure. But I've always like. I'm not ashamed to say it. I've always been a, at least when I've tried to be an actor, been good at it. I, it's kind of just something that comes naturally. Uh, certain people are good at certain things, and right? There's a lot of actors out there that have never taken one class. Granted, I, I do think there are, there like to a good teacher, there is something to say about a good acting class. But and the most, majority of, most need it. Majority of the time, the ones I've been to, I've never actually learned a thing. Because most of them aren't and so very helpful. I consider them more a just a almost like working out. It's that's it. It is the, the the primary reason to get into an acting class for most actors is so that you're working even when you're not working. Yeah, because you need to just keep working, and it's the place where you can not only work but you know you're going to be working on good material. Because just just because you're a working actor doesn't mean you're flexing the muscles with your thespianatic muscles. Yeah. Because you could be doing stuff that has no stimulation for you as an artist. Yeah. Uh, but as far as learning craft, it's very, very difficult terrain. Not only are there different approaches by master teachers of the past yeah. that you can list, but then you've got current teachers. There's a great there's a great Instagram account for those of you interested in this kind of thing. Not the one I'm um, talking about. No, 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 no. Her, she, the, the account is Audition Pro LA. It's got a blue tick. Her name is Sam Stiglitz. And <laughs> That's she's a funny a, name. She's a former casting director. Stiglitz. And the best thing that she does is inform and call out. She's constantly showing clips of people doing crappy things and trying to take advantage of people on Instagram, like saying, all you need to do is email this many casting directors and you're going to land a lead role on a TV series. Totally. She always has good advice. I like and comment on her stuff a lot because there's a lot of garbage out there. I have no clue what that world's like in India at all. But when it comes to Los Angeles, and I'm sure New York is very much similar, there's there's unfortunately more, more bad than good. Yeah, I mean, I guess on that there's... And it's expensive. Expensive, yeah, to get the good. Um, We're talking on the low end, two hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's low for really good acting class. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, here's I, I just I listed some stuff that people might want us to talk about. Um, like so, this person says lack of genre experimentation in Hindi films. Uh, and I also wouldn't put that just in Hindi. I, I put that in all of them. I would just say it doesn't even have to be genre specific, just experimentation and originality in the Indian yeah. film industry. Yeah, in, I guess Hindi everybody falls prey to it. But I guess Hindi is going through something right now that the others I don't feel are. They are one. I, <laughs> I they tried to do remakes for a long time. And oh, yeah. The audience is completely Did not like that at all. Reject it. Right. And so now they're just going for Juwan, Patan. Right. The, the big juggernauts. Right. To make With the big names. Brahmastras. Or sequels. Uh, um, and So are we. Yeah. Yeah, Hollywood is also unfortunately there. The Malayalam industry is not there. Tamil also has a really great small independent stuff. And I'm not saying Hindi doesn't. It's just few, much fewer and farther between. So you have 12th Fail and you have La Pacha Ladies or whatever it is. Two great Hindi films yeah. of the year. But that's a banger. It's I, I was actually just talking to a, a friend. Uh, he's a working actor um, on Sunday. And I was like, has the year been slow for you? He's like, it's been dreadful. Oh, it's, it's everybody. It's, uh, nobody's. For nobody's, everybody. He's like, nobody's working right now. Nope. And he's like, it's partially because the strike. It's partially because people uh, after the strike, they had plans and then they're going back because they're like, oh, it's not original enough. And the non-original stuff isn't working right now. Right, you right. Know, all the streaming services are uh, kind of. Not working anymore. I Apple's heard, lost so much money. Well, there's a yeah, there's a there's a perfect storm right now. So you have the SAG strike that was followed by the possible IATSE strike. Yep. Nobody was going to greenlight anything until that was wrapped up. Then you've got everybody running out of California because Newsom, hello, how about tax credits and other things that we should be giving to the studios here that other states and countries are giving to them, yep. um, and. Then I heard somebody say an interesting theory that wouldn't surprise me. If a lot of the studios 
basically said, oh, you thought you were going to screw us by striking and hurting us? Maybe we won't green light anything for 12 months. How's that taste? I don't know that they would do that to their own pocket, though. Just saying. Um, Bottom line, perfect storm right now. Granted, it also might be the fact that they see audiences, um, especially like the, the superhero films. Yeah. We're having like their, oh, like what is it called? The um, fatigue. Yeah. Which is why I think Marvel only released one film this year. And yeah. It's Deadpool and Wolverine. They were. There was oversaturation with all their TV series and the fact that they were what, doing four or five a year? It's too much. Um, so and the, and not only was it the quantity, it was the quality. Yeah, like the last several until Deadpool Wolverine, just story was, eh, yeah, great. Okay, you got the multiverse, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with films like Beetlejuice two. Yeah, um, and the which, fact that they took Joker. To into the musical realm. What's going to happen with those? That's an experiment. Those sequels. Yeah. Is it going to work? Right. Um, a, a beloved IP that people have been looking for forward to since the original came out and right. wanting a sequel from Tim Burton and um, for a long time. Um, but does that work anymore? That the style of Tim Burton. Right. Does that work anymore? Right. In modern cinema. He actually, I saw a quote. Um, there's a couple of cool quotes about it that I saw because they're doing PR right now, but he almost quit after his, uh, uh, Tim Burton almost retired after Dumbo. He said oh. his relationship with Disney and that whole process of making Dumbo made him almost reject wow. the, uh, the industry. Interesting. He's like, I lost my love for it. Wow. He said this Beetlejuice 2 brought it back is what he said. That's uh, great. And one of the things they did to... Uh, Burton and um, Keaton said when they were making it, they said, one, Beetlejuice shouldn't be in it. I remember seeing that like, a he lot. Said, I think he was only in it for 14 minutes of the first film. Right. Um, and he's like, I shouldn't be in it any more than that. Right. Um, and it needs to be practical. Um, and let let Burton control the storytelling. Yeah. Um, will that work? I don't yeah. know. I, Tim Burton's last hit was a long, long time ago. But I it mean, does unless have... you include Wednesday, people did like... Wednesday, I had a lot of problems with Wednesday, though I enjoyed Jenna Ortega. And one of the things that, well, that's one of the things that you've got built into this that makes producers say, okay, let's go with this, even though there's the question mark about Tim Burton's uh, yeah. being viable with the audiences per se. Nowadays, yeah. Yeah, is that Keaton's continued to work and be loved. Yep. Catherine O'Hara has continued to work and be loved. Yeah. Winona Ryder has continued to work and has worked in a genre that is like the Beetlejuice world and that it's like a sci-fi weird horror thriller type atmosphere with some comedic elements yeah. with Stranger Things. And then you've got Jenna. Yeah. Who's got an entire generation behind her. Yeah. So it, 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 they've got to, in my opinion, they've got to really screw it up bad for this to not work. And it's going to fall as it always does. It's going to fall on story. Did they get – Cruz waited for the sequel to Top Gun for one reason. He never had a good story until Maverick, and it worked. Yeah. So my hope is they waited this long because they finally got a good story. Um, um, oh, that's a good idea. I was looking at people's um, ideas. Ideas, questions. Um, but this person says, can you um, – differences in Hollywood – and Bollywood, and what Bollywood does better than Hollywood. This person says specifically Bollywood, if you have all of Indian cinema as well. Um, hmm. I, first thing would be just, and it's not really that it does it better. We just spend more money, which makes CGI usually better yeah. and uh, action yeah. usually better. Because those two things, as we've always said, require a yeah. lot of money. Our visual effects are predominantly better. Obviously, India has caught up many times. Yeah. RR is a Hollywood-level film. Uh, and there's many times in, in, in that we've seen now that um, even times in, in Kulki, uh, that there was Hollywood-level uh, uh, action going on. Yeah. Um, and But that's few and far between because those are big budget things, which is why they're done well. Right. It costs a lot of money to make fights look well and uh, CGI. It, it's not really that you don't have the skill. <laughs> it's the fact that 
it just cost a lot of money, unfortunately. Um, maybe one day the, the prices will come down. But in terms of other things, I actually think India in its current state, Bollywood specifically, uh, does romance better than Hollywood. Um, the, 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 the kind of the like, whole I romance rom com rom com is basically dead here, yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it used to be a big thing. Um, it but, was a standard thing that you'd get new rom coms at Christmas and Valentine's Day. Yep. Uh, so I think the fact that India actually does them. Yeah. Uh, Bollywood specifically, like the films like Mimi and Lapata Ladies and, and little indie films like those that have big heart to them that we just don't make anymore here, unfortunately. Yeah, that's one of the things that I see in all industries is a desire, especially Malayalam industry, but they all do it. Taking films that in the United States would be relegated to the indie feel and don't get wide distribution and don't get wide acceptance until they start garnering Globe, SAG, and Oscar noms. These other industries in India make those pretty regularly. We're seasonal. Yeah. They make them all the time. Yeah, somebody also had a question on... Um, uh, why India doesn't have um, why Hindi uh, horror isn't working in Indian cinema? So that is one of the things. So the question earlier about w w genre experimentation, mm -hmm. I don't understand because with a billion people, granted, you're not going to get families. So let's stop thinking about just butts in seats and start thinking about the number of people that would be attracted where you'd earn a profit. The reason horror does so well in the United States and other countries, but especially here, because they can, they can, they can be great. made for so little money and the return on investment is typically so insanely high. It doesn't take a lot to make the money back. You can budget a good horror film for under $5 million. Yeah, easily. And make 10, which is a failure, mm -hmm. and have doubled your investment. If you happen to... Granted, marketing. <laughs> right. Costs, yeah. Granted, if you happen to tap into a paranormal activity or a Blair Witch, bye bye. Yeah. You just. But most oh. most horror films at least break even yeah. here. Yeah. And there's a huge audience for them. And a lot of the storytelling, not all of it, there's still a lot of crap, but a lot of the storytelling is actually quite good yeah. and compelling. I'm not sure why no one has really decided to become like the Mike Flanagan or the Stephen King. Of the horror genre and just say, we're going to make good, legitimate, terrifying horror films and there will be an audience for it and we can do it for a well, little amount of money. I think I mean, Amali Ali is trying to get there. They're, they're now they've done they one this year. Uh, the, obviously, the Malayalam uh, uh, film with uh, Mamuts earlier this year. Fantastic piece of cinema. Yes. And that director did the same one with the uh, the house one. Where it was kind and of one of my it. favorites, and I think you'll agree that we've seen on the channel was Tumbad. Yeah. Exactly. So it, it can be done. I think one thing that in the United States, uh, the reason it, it it it's different, we've been doing horror since uh, almost the beginning the 30s. of cinema. Since the 30s. Hitchcock. And great. It, the cinema here has been the, formed the, by and, horror. And then you get into the slashers of the 70s and then the 80s. Universal Pictures alone. Yeah. So it's been in our DNA, correct, uh, for a long time. Where Indian cinema, it was very—I don't think it's ever been a thing. There might be one film that come out like Boot, uh, that that yeah, you're like, oh, that's kind of scary, right? It's never been part of really the DNA as like serious, yeah. Like the, when the the family horror, like Strees, uh, right, have, but that's a different genre. Uh, that's like the scary movie. Uh, right thing that we had in the early 2000s, late 90s. Here. Right. It's not a really well, thing anymore. And the other thing is we have consistently had horror films be considered elevative artistry. Like when Dracula was made with Bela Lugosi, this was an adaptation of Bram Stoker's classic novel. Mm -hmm. When Frankenstein was made with Boris Karloff, this was an adaptation of Mary Shelley's classic novel. But it wasn't until Silence of the Lambs that a horror film got an Oscar, yeah. but they were still considered, and then Hitchcock, forget it. Yeah, Hitchcock took the, took it to a, not just horror, but took cinema itself to a whole new world. And, and I just, seeing the pattern that we have had for so long, 
the only reason I can think of is that producers are scared they're going to lose money. But since it's such a low gamble, and I think there are, you know why I think this is that Andrani and I, we personally know big horror movie fans and the where, where they go for their horror film diet is America and Korea. Yep. Uh, it could also be the same thing that, that's with, um, uh, where did my train of thought go here? Choo -choo. Oh, the um, same thing. India does not do animation films. Right. It's not part of right. the culture or That's DNA. That's another one I would love to see them do. Uh, there was one that I'd seen. It's anime, but it was actually produced by a Japanese company, which was the, um, the uh, you know what I'm talking about. I do. Um, but just like horror, it's not been a thing and so like There's so much potential there um, for great storytelling i agree yeah um but that that would be my i think the main reason i know horror is definitely starting to get explored did you guys eventually watch the boy and the heron no i haven't seen it yet oh okay to. i would yeah. imagine that's one that would uh, i particularly imagine that that stephanie's gonna like oh, that yeah. a lot she's been a yeah a, uh What's his face is uh, yeah studio the Ghibli, legend studio giblets fan for yeah since she was a child so yeah those those would be I've been a long time wisher not long time but since I the the genre has been redeemed for me by a lot of filmmakers because it's still predominantly poop yeah but will you get a lot of good stuff if you know where to look and it, it is a I feel like it's a really untapped thing that i wish more people would do and i, I agree the animation um do, 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 is there a hollywood film that's coming up that you're looking forward to oh my stars yes what several right at the top of the list i mean besides we just talked a little bit about beetlejuice beetlejuice yeah 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 um yeah i've been talking about this for a while i cannot wait for nosferatu oh yeah you've been talking i'm about that one. really looking forward to it and i'm i'm cautiously rooting but i i something about it doesn't hit me right. <sighs> Please let Gladiator 2 be good. I <laughs> uh, feel the same way about Joker 2. Something inside me is not too certain about this one, but I, I really hope I'm wrong. Um, I'm really, on September 21st, the, the Chris Reeve documentary is coming out. Mm -hmm. I just posted about that, and I'm that's going to be... I wish there were more people who knew about Chris Reeve, not just as Superman, but as a person and as a as a as a really solid thespian who trained at Juilliard with Robin Williams. Um, uh, that I'm looking forward to those right off the top of my head. There's a bunch I know I'm forgetting about right now that are going to be part of the smaller films or even some we haven't even heard about yet. The Indian Cannes Film Festival one. Yeah. Uh, but I, what I, about you for Hollywood films? I've been trying to get. A screener for that film for Have you? a long time. It's it's it held. It's, I, uh, Variety actually just put it in their uh, short list of, uh, of things potentials? that they think's gonna get nominated. <sighs> Good. But uh, what about you, Hollywood films? Any on, I didn't mention? <laughs> Let's see. I have no idea what's coming out. <laughs> I know. It's with I'm, all. I'm so locked into Indian cinema. <laughs> you locked into Indian cinema, and let me tell you, when I had three kids that were close in age, because he's got two that are the same age. That was the black hole of my life in terms of being able to go see films. There was a span of about 10 years where I went to a movie theater maybe once a year let's because see. it's just difficult to do when you've got three kids. Uh, let's see. Uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice would be number one. Yeah. I, me and my wife have loved that film uh, for the longest time. Yeah, you looking on Fandango? I should do the same thing. Uh, Gladiator, I guess, yeah. Um <sighs> Man, that thing got. Did you see how much Gladiator has to live up for with me? I've got a freaking Maximus tattoo yeah. on my arm. So, <laughs> You're kind of obsessed. Uh, yeah, with it was the Gladiator deeply, movies. deeply impacting. Uh, the Crow has not been getting good reviews. At no, all. it has not. Joker two. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, 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 hopefully, it's I as hope. good as the first man. Um, oh. Uh, Here's what I'm actually excited for, because Universal has billboards what? outside of it saying it's going to be the best animated film of, of, of the year. The Wild Robot. I don't know what that is. It's an animated film that they're, they're saying is going to be in the conversation for um, best picture, best animated feature. It's going to be uh, tough to top Inside Out 2. That, that, nothing else is winning besides Inside Out 2. I don't know how it could. Um, why doesn't my list of coming soons 
have more than what I'm seeing right now. They only have like 15 coming soons on Fandango, and that's typically not what they do. All right, so uh, I asked on Twitter, let's do this now. Okay. People to send me their Indian cinema hot takes. Indian cinema hot takes. That's hot cakes, Rick. Okay, so these are not our hot takes. I'm just reading your hot takes. Oh, if I see. If you would like to have sent me a hot take, and we'll talk about your hot takes. Yeah. Not our hot takes. Not our hot takes. These are not hot takes. We're just talking about your hot takes. Don't get mad at us. Uh, <laughs> this is what you stupid babies are saying, not it's, us I'm, stupid We're just going to read them, and we're going to react to them. Or not. Uh, or not. If they, they may just roll our they, eyes. If they will get us too much in trouble. We may be silent. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's one. Pankaj Tripathi is the most overrated actor on OSR. He does the same thing everywhere. He's got completely overshadowed in Mizapur by Ali Faisal. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to disagree with you there. Also, he, uh, other dose of ours, Ali Faisal, fantastic. Does great in Mizapur. Yeah. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't agree with that hot take. Sorry. No, not, in one, not, not one iota. <laughs> That's not a hot take. <laughs> That's like saying, um, uh, 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 who did you just say earlier that was in? Um, that's like saying Robert De Niro is overrated. No, yeah. he is perfectly rated. <laughs> well, it's like saying Gary Oldman is overrated because he wasn't as good as uh, Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. That's ridiculous. What? Absolutely ridiculous. Sorry, I can't agree with your hot take there. I apologize. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Me too. Indian cinema makes better rom-coms in Hollywood. We, actually we already just said, said that. that. No, we have the same hot take. I agree yep. with you. Uh, they, but it's also the fact that... Currently, in, not in the past. India, uh, Hollywood doesn't make them anymore. <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, which is very sad. Um, I will say one of the things that I wish Indian cinema did more was depict, uh, especially Hindi cinema, would they, it would be unafraid of depicting real nitty-gritty life stuff more often mm. in their cinema. Mm. Uh that's gotcha. something I'd like to see. Topeka uses the same particular expressions in her movies, bearing few a few movies like Piku, Tamasha, and Cocktail. Those expressions of her gazing with her eyes. Blame you, the director for that. You saying she just has eyes and she uses them? I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> That's like saying Shah Rukh Khan she, always uses his eyes. You know what it's kind of like? It's kind of like people... People have the same gripe about Kira Knightley always having that. Oh, yeah. Look on her face. Yeah. It's their face, guys. Yeah, uh, they're not. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't believe for one moment that Topeka's putting on a face. I think she's just being herself. Prabhas and Salman are below average actors. That's for you to say, and I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, I don't actually believe Prabhas is a below average actor. I actually think he's a he's a good actor. Um, I, I don't know. That I would say he's a great actor, but I've also only seen three things of his. Yeah, same with – we haven't seen enough of either one of them to um, really get a – Below average? What does that mean exactly? Um, because we've seen a very good performance of uh, Salman Khan's in um, uh, uh, Baji Bajan. There's, I've seen him – there's a couple things we've seen that I we've enjoyed think, him in. I also think he was born to do Tiger. He was uh, – he's he, he does yeah, that role very, very well. I agree. Um, yeah, it's, it, I mean I, w I guess I would agree more with Salman in that case. But because uh, I think Prabhas is actually a, I think quite good. I think Prabhas does what he does well. Is, the thing with Prabhas right now is he's getting a lot of flack for his unfunniness and Kalki. Oh, yeah. I think that's the director's fault. Uh, but for a huge him. part of that is the script and the director. Yeah. There's there's only so much an actor can do when you don't have a great script. Uh, in those scenes he was in. It just didn't work. It wasn't funny. Kamal San standalone movies are not bankable anymore. Well, don't say that just because Indian 2 didn't do well. What does that mean? Because Vikram did well. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a hot take because that's the standard kind of thing that happens is that people, the minute somebody has a failure of some kind, oh, they're no longer popular, they're no longer good. And then if they have a hit, oh, they're evergreen. <laughs> I like this one. Gabar is gay. 100%. 100%. The first time I had ever heard that, I completely agree with you. The bar I, I agree is too. totally gay. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Case in point, he does nothing when Helen dances in front of him. <laughs> not one thing. He's not interested. Shah Rukh Khan is a terrible actor, but nobody's ready for that conversation. Disagree. That's absolutely untrue. You're just probably a fan of somebody else. And Now, <laughs> now I have seen him have terrible moments. That is absolutely true. There have been moments where I've watched him and, th and, it's di and I've been like, oh, dude, really? 
you know better, man. Why did you do that? <laughs> but he's a, I, I consider him to be a, a fantastic actor. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like him quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, he, but he does often fall into what just, he knows what's going to work. Um, Let's see. What Got I, more? This is fun. I like the hot I, takes. What did I miss? Amir shifting from original stories to mass cinema is a loss because just imagine the movies so stories the guy would have told otherwise. What did he? When did he make that switch? Uh, to mass cinema. Well, I guess he did Doom Three, and then he did um, Okay Thugs of Hindustan, which would be mass. Uh, but after that, I think it was La Cinchada, which I do that's believe not, that was. I don't think that falls into that category. I don't either. Opinion. But they consider that a remake. But if you really know how difficult it was to try to put that together, that's that's that was done out of passion, as opposed to what he was doing earlier in his career. And and I know there's stuff about that. I know from conversation with Atul, who wrote it, about what it took to get that done and what was behind the 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 process of Amir Khan talking with Atul about that. That wasn't a mass decision by any stretch of the imagination. Um. Mm, uh. Hindi mainstream cinema lacks good actresses, bearing Alia Dapika, Creedy Karina, <laughs> <laughs> naming a whole bunch. <laughs> they uh, don't have any good actresses except, I mean, if, if you get rid of her and 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 her, extreme, there's nobody left. Uh, uh, what? Lacks good actresses, <laughs> bearing Alia, <laughs> or extremely mediocre performers who are only successful due to their lack of options in A-list tier. Uh, name uh, them. Uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, no, no, I don't disagree. I disagree. Who? Uh, yeah, who? Who would that be? I can't think of any Hindi actress that I would say they're only where they are because of who they know or what they're related to. Yeah, not sure. I, I really don't. I don't. I don't know about that. Um, let's see. People. Oh, call I know who. I know who. Terrible actress is Radhika Apte. Just why does she even get work? The queen. Why does she even get work? People call out Animal in Sanju, but Bahu Bali got away with so many problematic things, specifically in part one. I don't, I don't know what you're saying there. Um, I don't either. That wasn't our issues with Animal. No. <laughs> That's the thing. Everybody, th Everybody, if you think our issue was the misogyny, you're wrong. Yeah, no. Yeah, we didn't like that, but there's misogynistic people and you have yeah. to tell stories about them. Yeah, no. That, it was the fact that it was, some of the script was brutally awful and some yeah. of the acting was equally bad. Yeah. Uh, that was definitely not the, no. uh, the issue with that film, in my no. opinion. Uh, let's see. SRK is the most overrated actor. A lot of you are about uh, uh, SRK. <laughs> well, if you say if people say he's the greatest actor in Indian history, yeah, that's a ridiculous over-exaggeration. Yeah. He's not. You're fine. Is he the most successful in box office stuff? Yeah, you can have that conversation. Is he irreplaceable? Of course. But um, he's not the greatest actor in Indian cinema history. Um. Is he the most important actor in Indian cinema? That's a, that is a that's a very serious conversation to be had. So who would be that's a that's a good topic. That's a very serious conversation. Who is the most important actor? You have to Okay, let's just mail. Let's do it. But mail. you immediately have to differentiate which scale of importance you're talking about. Exactly. Are you talking about the industry or the art form? Because that's Two completely different worlds. No, I'm just saying their importance to Indian cinema as a whole. I you I mean the, obvi the obvious ones are are Shah Rukh Khan, uh, Amitabh Bachchan. We're talking current. Uh, obviously, we could go back to the early. Yeah. Okay. So let's so not include Dilla from and, right and, and the Kapoor's of, yeah. of old. Let's just go from Bachchan into yeah. the current era. Okay. So it'd be Amitabh Bachchan, uh, Shah Rukh Khan, Kamal Hassan. Rajnikanth, Salman Khan, Mohanlal, Amir, Amir Khan, Mohanlal, Mahmoodi. Um, I mean, I guess you could include Prabhas because of Bahubali. I think you also have to include, because we've just named off a lot of the guys. But I think that would be more S.S. Rajamuli than Um I don't think the impact of Sri Devi. That's why I said male only, yeah. just so we could narrow that down. Uh, I, I, if I had to go, it would probably be Amitabh Bachchan. And Kamal. You don't have the current day stars without Amitabh Bachchan. You don't have much of the current storytelling shaping. Yeah. I mean, you have Shah Rukh Khan 
because do you have Shah Rukh Khan of Amitabh? Amitabh Bachchan? Yeah, it's you don't. You don't have really. Granted, I don't always love that argument because I don't. Um, I know. I don't. Always, I know. But that's more in the conversation of which one is better. So, like, they're saying, uh, I think this band is better because they were first, and you wouldn't have them without them. Right. That part of the conversation. We're not talking about better though. We're talking about important. Um, so I think that's a different conversation. Correct. So in terms of like, if you're like, are the Beatles better than Led Zeppelin or whoever you want to say, and then your argument is, well, you wouldn't have blank without blank. I don't like that argument at all. Um, the one thing you can point to, for example, and that's why I go into the artistry connection versus just industry, because the Beatles is a good example. There was never a concept album mm. before Sgt. Pepper. They were the first I would to create a concept album where the whole album as a piece of art from the first song to the last song, that was Sgt. Pepper. That's why this conversation's different. Because if you wanted to say the Beatles are the most important band of all time, right? I would probably agree with that. Because Which, of what they And many people, many people consider them not just the level of importance. Same thing with Michael Jackson. But if it's you, not just the importance. It's the quality of the artistry. Yeah. Um, Michael. What they did in seven years is mind-boggling. Obviously, if you're talking about uh, performers, just standalone performers, it would probably be Michael. Elvis, I guess, would have a, a different. Um, but I think globally, Michael had an even bigger impact. He did. Than Elvis uh, than, Presley? Than even Elvis. He did. Even though Elvis did have a big global impact. <clears throat> Massive. Um, but I think Michael would probably be that. It's but, very hard. It's, so so in this conversation. It's very hard to minimize. I would <laughs> say it's Amitabh. Yeah, but it's at the same time, if somebody says Shah Rukh Khan is the most important contributor and impactor of Indian cinema, it's hard to, it's, it's, it's the same it's like you can't you can say Kamal Hassan, you can say Amitabh Bakchan, but I also can't disagree firmly about that because he has his place there. Yeah. I also think this conversation is probably better had with specific industries because they're all yeah. so different. It's yeah. hard to say like True. <laughs> Shah Rukh Khan or Amitabh is more important than Mohanlal in the Ma in, right or Mamodi in well, the Malayalam industry for or sure. Rashikant in the Tamil industry. Better known and more worldly accepted, there's nobody bigger than Shah Rukh Khan. Mm -hmm. He is the most watched movie star on planet Earth. Yeah. Period. So if you want to talk about it from that vantage point of what actor in every industry on Earth gets more people to go to the movie theaters and watch his films, it's Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. Um, but that's a fun conversation. That is a fun conversation. I'm sure you guys have plenty of opinions about it. Uh, <laughs> so sound off uh, down below um, of, of your thoughts on everything we just said. I'm and why we're doomed. Uh, seeing if anybody has any more hot takes here. Um, Uh, I guess people are going night night in India. Mm. Uh, so. <laughs> no uh, way! It's only eleven fifteen. They're having dinner. They're not going to sleep at eleven fifteen. No way! All right, I went on Reddit, and this is um, Bollywood hot takes. Bollywood hot takes. Bollywood hot takes like hotcakes, but better. What? Filled with juicy content. Dripping out of every nugget. Um, <laughs> Ranbir Kapoor, no matter what role he plays, looks like a man-child on screen. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny... That's weird. <laughs> it's like, that's your hot take. <laughs> I didn't see a man-child when he was playing <laughs> Sanjay Dutt. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, Swadesh ain't all that. I disagree. I do too. That would be a hot take, though. So that's off to you. That is a that is a spicy take. Um, There'd be a lot of people who agree with you, but I disagree. I think Swadesh is a wonderful film, um, and one of my favorite Shah Rukh Khan performances in films. SRK should do more age appropriate roles, uh, and I would love to see him in more content driven roles. I agree with that. He's a terrific actor, but bad selection of scripts is costing him. 
I mean, I guess not in money. What but. is age appropriate? <laughs> what, what is age appropriate? I think more. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe not playing young. So like playing like maybe fifties. Uh, he's fifty, right? 55. He's almost sixty. He's almost sixty. Yeah. Um, what is he? Fifty-eight now? Fifty-seven? But he's a young fifty-seven, fifty-eight. It's uh, like um, I don't like. I have a. It's always weird. I movie. don't like Ranveer Singh's movies. His acting always looks over the top to me. That is, uh, I don't know if that's actually a hot take for a lot of people because yeah. I've seen that. Uh, the people have that opinion. Do I agree with it? Not at all. Yeah, I haven't seen that at all. Um, but I, I don't know if it's a hot take actually because I, I people, I anytime we do anything Ranveer, I see that comment. So uh, if I think want, a lot of people just don't like him. Yeah. Uh, Kaho Naho isn't that great of a movie as people claim it is. I agree. Because we didn't like that movie. <laughs> Don't disagree. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, 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 Amir Khan is an average actor who happens to have fantastic scripts to shield his lack of range. I don't disagree. I don't think he's a. Yeah, uh, I would not call. I would not say that Amir Khan has great range. Yeah, in terms of his ability to play a myriad of different types. Nor would I. I. I don't know. If I would agree with the term average actor. I think he's a good actor. I think he's a good actor. My my favorite thing, and I say this every film we ever see, his ability to access his emotions and be believable, so that I feel him feeling what he's feeling. But is very, very strong. I would not call him a great actor. I, I would consider him an excellent actor. I, I wouldn't put him I in the categories of, say, a I, Nasiruddin Shah or a um, Nawazuddin Siddiqui. Yeah. Um, I like him a lot. I, I, I love Amir I mean, Khan. Outside the of same his way, I feel the same way with, with – I've used this comparison all the time because it's not just the films they choose. It's the caliber of the actor. I love Tom Hanks. I think his range is very limited. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've watched him do things that work really well, and I've watched him do things that don't work very well. He has a good range. He's not always Tom Hanks. Neither is Amir Khan always Amir Khan. But my favorite Tom Hanks films are when Tom Hanks is Tom Hanks or in the wheelhouse of what he's strongest at. And I feel the same way about Amir Khan. Yeah. I, and when they're, when they're his, that, they're great. Outside of his performance in the second half of Dehoom 3. Yeah. Uh, I've liked, I think, everything he's done. For the most part. Um, yeah. But there, there is a lot of stuff where you see, and it was, it was the brother the twin brother in to whom yeah. three was like, Oh, that's just PK again. Yeah. Um, and, and there work. was a, there was a little bit of that PK look and he can't help it. Kind of. It's his eyes yeah. in La, La Sinchada. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's his eyes. Hindi, he can't help it. Hindi industry should go away from hero centric movies. I don't know that you should go away from it because it, no. is, it is kind of part of the DNA of Indian cinema. And it's universal in storytelling. You need, you need heroes and bad guys, but do I think sometimes they should have much better scripts? Yeah. I agree. And I think they should have more complicated characters. Yeah. It's one of the reasons. Granted, they're not always for us, those style. Right. But that's so. one of the reasons why um, Bond under the uh, he's not doing Bond anymore. But when um, Daniel Craig, one of the best things about his Bond is the humanity behind him. It was the first time Bond wasn't squeaky clean and perfect. He had he was broken. Mm -hmm. We need more of that. We, we also need the heroes that are unbroken. We need Captain Americas, but we need more. That's what I was mentioning about believable believability. Just real people in real situations depicted in real ways, real stories of interesting human interaction. Um. Someone said, "And how about doing? Why is why is Vishal Bardwaj the only one brave enough to tackle Shakespeare? <laughs> there should be more Shakespeare done. I mean, when you do it perfectly, yeah. Uh, uh, this is 
Abhishek Bakchan is a brilliant actor and is not his fault that he only gets compared to his father and not to his peers. We're big fans. Dang. We're I see we're, no lies in we're, that statement. Yeah, we're big fans of Abhishek Bakchan. And, Granted, and, I would not consider him a great actor. Similar to uh, Amir Khan. I consider him a, a, a very a, good actor. Underrated? Absolutely. Underrated. Uh, where Amir might be overrated. Right. In terms of right. what audiences love and, and that kind of stuff, even though I think he's a very good actor, I think Abhishek has the opposite. Yeah. I think and people I, don't give him the credit. It, they don't give him the credit, and I I believe his best days are ahead of him. I think he's going to get some roles, and I really hope that people embrace it. I've seen enough of his work to know that there is <laughs> there is greatness in there. I'm a big fan of what—I'm a fan of his future work. I think Abhishek can really shock people with how good he's going to become. The day men understand why women love SRK will be the day they understand us. That we was, don't. That we, was written by yeah, my wife. Written by your wife. <laughs> we understand. We understand why he's beloved. Vidya Balan, Kolki Kaklin, and Kolkanasan uh, Sharma uh, don't get enough recognition and appreciation for the work they've done. I agree. Agreed. It's neither does Swastika Mukherjee. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um... Uh, I particularly, um, I would like to see more of the film choices because I love the choices and the roles and the commentary and the intellect of, of Kalki, Caitlin. Uh, this person says, hot take on a, uh, majority of Indian audiences can't differentiate between good acting and good characters. Hmm. I don't know about the Indian specific audiences there. I think that's actually audiences in general um hmm. that's a that's a kind of a deep statement really it is um differentiate between audiences can't differentiate between good acting and good character so like the writing of the character obviously a lot yeah, of those it's things why, do coincide well it's the promise problem mm -hmm. in kulki yeah i believe that the promise problem in kulki is not promise he was doing the best he could with the script he had. Ooh. I think that was the script. Ooh, this is a spicy one. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> good I Lord. can't wait. Kamal Hassan is no cinematic genius. He just <laughs> he just copies Hollywood movies and makes them into Tamil movies and gets hailed as the savior to Tamil cinema. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, I'm gonna, gonna have to, highly disagree with that. Gonna have to disagree with that. That's, that's a spicy take. Though. That's comparable. That Steven Spielberg doesn't know what he's doing. All he did was steal from such as it right. I mean, it, I don't. I see no lies. I see no lies. Uh, <laughs> no, that is a spicy take. Now, did he see what was going on in Hollywood because he was a student of cinema and want to bring it to India, and so he did things that Hollywood was already doing? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? Yep. Hollywood was leading. Why? It's like, that, that doctor didn't come up with that operating technique. So what? He saved more lives than the guy who came up with the technique. Superstar VJ is overrated. That's for you to say. Okay. <laughs> we, one, haven't seen enough of yeah, them. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, can't really, uh, I'll let you get destroyed in the comments. And for, for that one, down, down in the comments below. Um, uh, RRR is overrated. Yeah, disagree with you. Though. Highly disagree. Highly. Now, it may not be your cup of tea. Absolutely fine with that. There's folks that didn't like La La Land. I don't understand it, but you can't say that it wasn't a good film. Yeah, you may not like it, but uh, I don't know. Let's when you're looking at, the, at what makes a film a good film in terms of story and acting and direction and music and entertainment value. I mean, at the core of it, like all things, it's, he, Raj Mooley put together a pretty great story, a brother story, a dosty story. Um, uh, somebody had the same Pankaj uh, What's the, What's with uh, the Pankaj hate? Good Lord. Are you guys just that mad? Could, that could not be me. I know there's some people criticizing Pankaj of recent date because it seems he's made making choices based on the paycheck versus the quality of the content. I mean, I can't. Do you know what John Houseman said to Christopher Reeve? John Houseman was the director of the Dramatic Academy at Juilliard. And there's a great clip of 
of this in the trailer to the Chris, Chris Reeve thing. And Houseman said to Chris Reeve, you want to be a classical actor unless they're willing to pay you a lot of money for something else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he's just doing what Nasir's done his whole career. He's like, I'm going to do these big films to fund every, my love for the, my smaller everybody's films. Everybody's done it at some point. They're, every got to make a living. Every actor has taken a role that they weren't interested in, but the money was so ridiculous. They said, sure. Guess who we're going to see in the uh, superhero world soon? Emma Stone and Saoirse Ronan. Do you know why? Because they want to keep doing the films that they love doing. Yes. <laughs> you got to. Hopefully... It's when you do it, it's also good. Hopefully, it turned out well. <laughs> uh, okay, but, this person says a lot of current Bollywood actors are just average to below average actors. I would need names. Yeah, we need to know because if you're including, so, so the first name that comes to mind, a, a current Bollywood actor is Vicky Koshal. Really? Yeah, no, he's definitely uh, properly rated in yeah. terms of being a fantastic actor. Yeah. Animal should have ended it with the first half. Well, I, that I agree with. <laughs> and it just should have had a. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've blocked so much of it. I don't even remember if I liked the first half. I know I didn't like the second half. Uh, this person says Bollywood does not make its real profits from making movies. I'm guessing they're talking about underground. <laughs> well, and the crap of buying out theaters just to make it look like your box office was big is the same thing of having low, you know, small dick energy and you drive a big car or motorcycle because of it. It's it's aberrant to me that that's allowed. I, it's aberrant to me that theaters allow that, that the industry allows that. It's, it's disgusting. Imran Hashmi is one of the finest Bollywood actors, better than some of the overrated uh, stars. I think he's a good actor. I think he's a good uh, actor. We actually haven't seen a very uh, uh, a whole heck of a lot of him, maybe five tops. I'm really happy to say I can't think of one person that I would point a finger at and say that person shouldn't be working. Yeah. In any of the industries. Yep. I haven't seen somebody that except blaringly. The white except the white actors. I haven't seen anybody so blaringly bad that I think, why are they even working? Except the white actors. Mark mm -hmm. Bennington is excluded. <laughs> and uh, the actor who was in Thung, uh, Thung, Thungalum. Um, he did. He did a. He did a okay job. He did a good job. Sardo Odom uh, would have easily been selected for foreign film if our. Uh, Indian board uh, wasn't brain dead. Can't disagree. Uh, They've made they, some they pretty lousy choices. I forget what they sent. That I don't here. remember. I, I remember I block out the stuff I'm not happy about. Yeah. I focus on the positive. But, uh, uh, Varun and Abhishek aren't bad actors. Oh, it's basically saying the same mm -hmm. thing that we've talked about before. Yeah. Ranveer's a gem. We might not, we might lose him. Please don't lose your gems. You won't lose him. Um, I haven't seen him. Since I guess his last film would have been Circus, which obviously did not do well at all. Yeah. Um, and I uh, heard was just dreadful. But I don't believe I we're going to see him this year. No, but I also, it'd be weird if he, I mean, lose him to what? Stop acting? I think he loves it oh, too much. He would come here. He, he might, but the reality is that's a hard nut to crack, yep. even if you're Ranveer Singh. Uh, Amir Khan is a better director than actor. What did he direct? What did Amir Khan direct? I, I don't... So many stuff that he has been in, so I... Topeka has a terrible to mediocre screen presence. <laughs> what? Okay, buddy. <laughs> uh, wow. That's like the fat guy on the couch. Uh, I really don't think Topeka's that pretty. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> The camera loves. That's like saying. Her. That's like saying Sri Devi has no screen. Yeah, like, it's like there's people the camera loves that all you have to do is be on camera and it's gonna. She's one of those people the camera loves to be. Good cool. lord, Vicky Koshal is overrated. Ugh. Wow, that is stupid. <laughs> He's underrated, if yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what's the criteria? Um, just weird. Air Rahman, our non-bar, is no more the magician he used to be uh, a decade ago. So I'm guessing they're saying he's fallen off. Don't agree with that. <laughs> didn't he just? Didn't he just do Ryan? 
<laughs> like the best song of the year. And a great score. Oh, man. These are spicy, some of these. Uh, Indi- uh, Shah Rukh Khan is not fit for commercial cinema. His true, <laughs> his true strengths lie in playing grounded, realistic characters. I don't think you disagree with that. Wait, read the first part again. SRK is not fit for commercial cinema. That is absurd. No, I think I, I think what you're uh, I think you might be thinking of it differently because I think what they're saying is I they wish he would stop doing Jawan and Bataan and do more of Swadesh. Why can't he do both? No, I'm just saying that I think that's what they're saying. Yeah, I, but to say he's to say he's not fit for commercial cinema. He is commercial. He cinema. is commercial cinema. Yeah, that's, that's like saying Tom Cruise isn't fit for action films. He is action films. <laughs> Man, it's not, not, not a lie. Uh, Alia and Kangana have the potential to be the greatest actresses of all time. Dang. Uh, uh, that's a tough one. Uh, we haven't seen definitely enough of Kangana. Uh, she's I know she actress. doesn't have the hair of Ronnie McCurdy. Alia? Did you hear that hot take? <laughs> that that was a criticism she got earlier yeah. in her career? Alia, it's very young career. So it's, that's definitely difficult to say. That's extraordinarily young career. But, She's got a lot to do. Sure. Yeah. Does she have the potential to be well, the greatest Indian actress of all time? Yeah. But, I mean, you need to see a lot from her <laughs> for the decades. Yeah. Talk to me in 25 years. Yeah. That's a for somebody who's like a, a maybe a decade into her career. Yeah. That's uh, very difficult to yeah. say. Um, there's nothing called stardom left. We've heard that one before. I think uh, SRK still has stardom, though. <laughs> it depends on the level of stardom. Nepotism isn't wrong. I think there's who something. said that. This person, I don't know. Good for you. Uh, I agree. Uh, there's nothing wrong with nepotism as long as they're talented. Correct. Um, Just like any relationship, everything is built on relationships. The whole nepotism thing is such an old, dead dog. It needs ooh. to be buried. Akshay Kumar is a hugely versatile actor who became one note over time uh, because of money. Yeah. I, I don't think, disagree with that. I think he's a, actually a very talented actor. Uh, I don't I don't disagree with that. Granted, we haven't seen like all of his stuff. That, like, it's 10 no, films that come out every but year. But if you just compare two of our favorite films of his that we saw, which is Padman, mm-hmm. and then the very first film, Kasari, those are beautiful performances. If you look at those two separately... Yep. You can see the guy's legit. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, Vidya Balan smokes Topeka and Priyanka. How would you rank those actors? Do you agree with that statement? I, I, for me, all three of those ladies I've seen do brilliant work. I all three of them would probably agree. If like like if I was to rank them, I don't know if I would say smokes. No, that, that doesn't smoke. To like, but. If I was to rank those, it'd probably be Vidya, Dapika, Priyanka. But I think um, they're all very talented actresses. I they've all had just great work. I, I really see all three of them in the same kind of light. Here's something I disagree with wholeheartedly. Bebo can't act. Karina Kapoor. Vitamin. I, yeah, I I strongly disagree. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you've only seen Pooh. Yeah. And she uh, she uh, nailed that role, by the way. Yeah. (laughs) That's not an easy role to nail. (laughs) To be the -the over-the-top Pooh? It's like Nick Cage in in Valley uh, Girl. Uh, Or Sean Penn in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Those are not particularly easy things to nail. Dude, she is actually a fantastic actress. Yeah, she is. Um, And she's doing it even more. uh, You put... You put Dapika above Priyanka? Yes. Wow. We've always disagreed. That's a hot take. We've always disagreed on that. I know. You've had... You actually, I think, have a higher um, acting... Uh, uh, like, you think of them higher as an actor for two people specifically, Priyanka and Amir Khan, than I do. That's true. I don't think they're terrible by right. any stretch. No, I know. Yeah, but, but I do. I, I do. You I have more of appreciation just for like both of them. I just like my my value of Tom Cruise and Dwayne Johnson, which I don't. <laughs> I know you 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 hate both of them. Good, Dwayne. You picked for acting. That's terrible, Rick. Don't I told ever, you to watch Ballers. Don't ever say that again. You've never seen Ballers, uh, so you have nothing to stand on. Uh, so, 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 so. 
Malayalam and Tamil cinema should take the lead in Indian film industry rather than Hindi and Telugu. I don't know any of them are taking the lead. They're all kind of doing their own thing. Yeah, and by taking the lead, for me, taking the lead is being artists. The downfall of Topeka is insane. Weirdo. Uh, from Ramlila, Bajirao, Piku, Tamasha, Padmavat to Patan, Jawan, Kalki, Fighter. Okay, those are different style of films. One, I have a theory about all that. Yeah. <laughs> is that she, they knew they were going to get pregnant. <laughs> and so she was like, I'm going to get the bag so she could take a nice break. <laughs> yep. I'm going to, I'm going to get some paychecks and take a break. Patan, also, she was definitely not the issue in Patan at all. She wasn't. The issue in any of those things, I, I've not watched her turn in something where I've thought, ooh, she didn't do that uh, well. Yeah, because Kalki, she was actually, I think, the most interesting kind of character. They just should have explored her way uh, that's more. All, that's the problem. We uh, needed more of her. Uh, and her performances is It's enjoyed. not her fault that predominantly she's on camera just being expressive. Granted, I, yeah, if you're comparing those films, the back half are definitely commercial. But like I said, I'm pretty sure a lot of this... Because right before all these, she did that one that they threw the acid on her, right? Yeah. Uh, that I think she produced. Yeah, she's got a nice flu of those the ones you just named. I'm telling you, I think they were, her and Ranveer were I, like, well, I think we're going to get I pregnant soon. Yep. And uh, I want to take a good year or so off. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you're going to pay me how much for how, how little work? <laughs> yeah. You got it. I think that, I once again, she didn't do bad in any of those. No. But yeah, I, I, disag uh, I disagree. I thought uh, she was really good in Pathan. And she was. The first half of Patan was great. What do you want? From, she can only do so much with the script and story she's given. Patan is not Piku. The second half definitely fell off. Yeah, I mean, but it's not Tamasha. Yeah, I. Uh, the two, you can have both at the same time. Yeah. Um, so I don't. I don't agree. You Topeka has fallen no, off. I don't I think she's agree fallen with that off at all. At all. Uh, there was some spicy takes in there, though. I like it. That was good. Uh, we should maybe could start, talk about that all day. We should start like a subreddit so people can send their spicy yes. takes. Give and, us your uh, hot spice takes. When we can um, kind of do it. Some people have suggested we do like find like some of our favorite scenes in Indian cinema and break them down. Great. Could be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Um, uh, other people. What do they say as well? Um, Anything acting stuff. Because I get that. I'm sure you do too. Oh, yeah. DMs from actors who are dealing with situations and they're wanting advice on what to do with that situation. And it's probably universal for other people as well. Somebody said we should talk about Indian politics. Uh <laughs> By the way, there's somebody who DM'd me. No, we don't want to talk about Indian politics. We're not going to talk about Indian politics. Uh, we'll talk about American politics yeah. because that's our wheelhouse. Yeah. But the there's somebody who asked me a question because they were in a play. They're a young actor, and the director was telling them that they weren't looking comfortable with their physicality, and they wanted help on how to be more comfortable on stage and just yeah. be themselves. That comes with practice, and it comes with relaxation exercises. It comes with knowing your body. And you need someone else to see it. So if there's if there's any classes you can get into that are specifically dealing with movement on stage or a public speaking class that deals with movement on stage. Now, here's the caveat. You don't want acting teachers who are going to make physicality the central thing, like the acting teacher you were talking about who said, don't put your hands in your pockets. Well, why? It's, it's, it's getting to know your body, be comfortable in your body. And what happens a lot when you're performing, it's amazing. If you ask, if you put a group of people, kids, adults in the same room and tell them to just start walking around the room because they're being watched, they'll suddenly walk different. They're walking with right arm and right leg at the same time because just something happens and that's what you need to get past. You need to be able to bottom line, get comfortable being private in public. Mm-hmm. Once you're comfortable being your private self in public on stage, your physicality will become much more natural looking and feeling. But it takes training. Yeah. Anyways, so you let us know what you'd like us to talk about in the future. If you yes, like uh, the podcast format, yes, uh, maybe we'll do one next year. Um, <laughs> Every year, the anniversary of the podcast. Fun fun little uh, thing that I've, I've learned about. Um, and, and, and I feel like it's a good use of AI. There's now software where I can upload this whole video and it will cut like one minute segments and sub them. That's nice. And, to, and also like when you're talking, it'll go to you or it'll split our faces. That's in nice. In minutes. That's nice. For like TikToks. 
And I, yeah, AI ain't all bad, folks. Oh, no. Not at all. Uh, when you try to make an AI actor, that's where I, I, I would disagree yeah, with you. Yeah, uh, exactly. Oh, well, unless you, I guess, include an animation. because. But the difference in that is the who's, who's going to voice it. Yeah. Um, Which goes into... Granted, I bet what's going to happen with the audiobooks? There's also artists. Yeah, there's, it's all AI you now. Yep. The artists that do the animation for the animated films. Yep. So, you, well, you that's know, what happened you, when we went digital. All of the hand artists that were doing all of the hand drawings and were the elite Disney artists and the painters' backgrounds. Backgrounds were all painted before digitization and green screens. And now th that art is gone. Yeah. Those artists don't exist anymore. Unfortunately. But anyways, yeah. let us know what topics you like us to talk about and uh, what you thought about any of our, uh, our discussions dumb here. Let us know down below.